Can't die. Who says I can't? Why do they say that? July of last year, Robert Terpstra, 86 years old, is determined. His wife died of cancer. It was a long and painful death. Mr. Terpstra is losing his sight. He fears a pointless road of suffering. After making his decision to end his own life, Mr. Terpstra feels relieved. I have thought enough about it. Years when I saw my wife and others suffering, I thought, why must that happen? Why must there be so much suffering? Mr. Terpstra has always had control over how he wanted to live his life. This decision is no different, says his son Albert. It comes from many things. He lost his wife, my mother. It was an awful thing to happen. And then his physical deterioration, namely his blindness. Where he asks, what am I living for? What is waiting for me in the future? Please spare me. It has now been a year and he still remembers the awful shock when he realized he could no longer see the letters of the building across the street. He can no longer watch television. He has not been able to pursue his hobbies of sailing and repairing watches and clocks for a long time now. He knows that he will become completely blind. He doesn't want to wait for that. We speak to both, father and son. The father, Obber, in Rotterdam, and his son, Albert, in Ettenleur. The son seems tormented by the situation, whereas the father seems relieved, almost content. Can you imagine that for me, as an outsider, I see a man with a lot of energy and strength and self-confidence? I went to my GP and told him, and he said, you, you are so fit and full of life. Then I told him what I was planning to do, and nothing came of it. But I have found the way to do it, and it is going to happen. Helping someone commit suicide is a criminal offence in the Netherlands. To protect his GP from any complications with the law, Terpstra has decided not to concern him any more with the matter. Shrouded in extreme discretion, Mr. Terpstra has taken active measures to end his life. Only his son Albert knows about this. Now he is sharing it with us. He says he wants to share his story with others. I want to die. I'm not allowed to, but I want to. You said you were happy that we are here? Then I can lift the burden from my heart and others can hear my story. Have you spoken to many others about this? No. It is clear that you do not speak with others about this. Do you feel lonely? Yes. At this moment, I feel alone, taxed, and burdened with this matter. Burdened with not only the knowledge, but also the preparations, the support, and the anticipation of what will happen. And the only person you can share this with is also the topic of discussion, and who will shortly no longer be here, yes. In Friese is the Sassou Sadeer. I do not want to suffer. I do not want to hear, he was always such a strong man and now look at him. I don't want that. You want the security of knowing that before that happens, you make the decision of what will happen. Yes, you have said that it took some time before you could accept this. Why was that? My own wife died three weeks after her 43rd birthday. I experienced that firsthand. She left two small children behind. I saw how hard she fought to live. You could have said that your father fights against life. That is also something I had to accept, but now I understand. He wants to go back once more to his much-loved island, Amalund. He can only do this with the help of his son Albert, and asks him for understanding. 
Although this is very difficult for Albert, he accepts his father's wishes. He says he can because he loves him. How much love do you have for your father? So much that if he fears, and his fears of deterioration are realistic, and you want to prevent that from happening to him, then because of my love, I want to do that for him, so I accept it. Of course it is odd that one talks about death, but I think it is healthier than to wait and wait until one dies of unhappiness. You are his son, and I can imagine that you feel guilty about the lack of time that you can make for him, or is that not so? That is certainly so. I am busy with work for more than eight hours a day. I also have my own home and children to take care of. And as his ability to care for his own home has deteriorated, I take care of his home too. Have you thought that something could happen in the future that would change your mind? I wouldn't know what that would be. It would have to be something where I suddenly could see. Is there nothing that can be done to correct your eyesight? Yes, of course. I was in the hospital here and was sent to one in The Hague, but they said there was nothing that could be done. Very slowly, it will become worse. There is a picture of two children. Are they your grandchildren? Yes. Have you thought what this would mean to them? Yes, but I am an old man. I was crazy about my grandpa when I was young. Don't you care what they think? Yeah. Do they come around to visit? Oh yes, quite often. Have you told your children about this? They know absolutely nothing about this. I believe they are too young for that. I also think that at this phase it is not wise to tell them, especially considering their experience with their own mother. And when your father is no longer here? Then I will tell them. Are you afraid that they will blame you or your father? I'll have to wait for that reaction. I don't think so. Does it bother you that you will do something on your own whereby they will no longer have a grandpa? No. Are you not very hard? No, but I see the reality. It is better now than, to put it in his words, to see him as a drooling old man. He does not want that. He wants them to remember their grandpa as he was. What could I do to prevent this from happening? Nothing. That wouldn't work. It is so solid in my thoughts. Do you have the desire to talk him out of it? No, absolutely not. Ik denk dat ik me daar de era van hem zal vervreemden. I think that would push him away. At any rate, I do not want to receive a telephone call saying, we have found your father. I am not nervous or emotional, it's just over. I have seen too much suffering to change my mind. It is always afgelopen. The most humane method of euthanasia is by using a so-called barbiturate. In every pharmacy, these drugs are securely locked away. In low dosages, these drugs work like sleeping pills, but in high dosages, they work as a deadly poison. Only doctors can legally obtain such drugs. In these high dosages, the patient falls asleep and then dies a quick and painless death. The nightmare of every GP is to receive such a request from his patient. The doctor is often the only hope for the patient, but if he administers a drug to someone who commits suicide, he is also committing a criminal offence and can go to jail for up to three years. There are special interest groups which try to mediate, but they are not always successful. Because it is a taboo in society, many elderly feel alone with their wishes. 
Some hang themselves, while others jump from high buildings. Most, however, do not dare. They simply wait for their lot to come. Why do you think it is important that this is shown on TV? Om hier toch enige uh, bekendheid aan te geven dat to show that people have their own self-determination. Zelfbeschikkingsrecht heeft. What is volgens u de What is the function of showing this on TV? Dat er meerdere mensen het zien en zeggen: "Hey, kijk." That more people will see and say, "Hey, look at that man." He talks about it and is not afraid of death, and he accepts that. I think that. If you could say what you enjoyed the most right at this moment, what would that be? I like to listen to music now and then. Yes, now and then music. I cannot see how everything grows and blooms because I have to get down on my knees above a flower to look at it. As an outsider, I think, can't you do fun things together with him? Is that a naive thought? No, that isn't a naive thought. But when you think, what is fun for him, or how can I include him in activities, they are all creative things. Creativiteit kan hij ook niet meer. Those things have become impossible for him to do in the way in which he wants to do them. So he asks, what can I do? Zitten en naar een muziekje luisteren. That is, to sit and maybe listen to music, and after he has had a nice day, he asks, but what about tomorrow? Zegt hij, en dan de andere dag? Dan zou ik wensen dat de voorgaande dag niet had plaatsgevonden. I couldn't jump in front of a train, so I had to think of something else, and I have found it. Terpstra will not tell us how he's going to end his life. This process is always conducted within closed circles. There are suitable drugs available, but those who dispense such drugs are punishable by law. This is why we seldom hear about it. Maar kunt u zich voorstellen? Heel goed. Can you imagine my thoughts? You have nice things around you. It is a beautiful day outside. Yes, of course, and I am a nature-loving person. Would you like it if someone came a few times a week and took you to a nice park to enjoy nature? I would say no, because I would feel an obligation to someone else, and I'm much too independent for that. They would not have to hold your hand, but would walk beside you. Yes, but I don't want that. No. But wouldn't that be something that would make you want to live? No. I have done a lot. I have seen a lot and I have enjoyed my life. What could change for me? I'm becoming more blind and walking is also becoming more difficult. En daarom, ik ben er zo van overtuigd. En daarom ben ik er ook helemaal van. Ik het niet. Nou, het, het, het is niet een sad story. Of tussen u beiden en mij. Nee, het is ook. Mijn beslissing is iets dat grounds me. En geeft me surety. Onzekerheid, dat is voor mij nooit een goed punt geweest. Heb ik nooit best tegen gekund. Was uw beslissing iets dat dat geeft je peace? Ja, zeker. Yes. Very much. Do you expect to receive a phone call asking you to come over? I'm ready to do it. Do you know how that will happen? I expect I could receive a call asking me to come over tomorrow, so we can talk quietly. You know, then I know enough. What would you say if I said, Mr. Terpstra, I have been here a few times before and it was nice speaking with you. I think you're a very sympathetic man and I said, please don't do this. How would you react? Then I would say, I understand what you are feeling, but my feelings are so strong and so anchored, there is nothing you could say. But surely everyone has the right to live? Yes, of course. I don't want to take a life from another. They are free to live. But if I said that I enjoy coming here and I would miss being able to do that, 
then I would say that you have got to get over it. My mind will not change. And I did it a bit consciously to get through the winter, so I could see everything grow again, and now nature is at its most beautiful. Now it is time to get off the mountain. It is time. It is time. It is such a load off my shoulders. It is good. I am truly happy. On the 25th of August, Oba Terpstra took the barbiturate. He never said how he obtained the drugs. He died almost instantly. A month later, we are with Albert in his late father's empty house. When the day arrived, he was extremely happy. He even looked happy. The atmosphere was like a birthday party. I was here at about 10 o'clock, and he asked if I wanted a glass of wine. On that day, Albert is comforted by a friend. It was really very animated and relaxed, until he said, Boys, bring your glasses, we are going upstairs. He was... He was always a charming host, and he was so again. We stood talking, and he took some kind of glass. Sat down on the bed and said, Boys, thank you for everything. Now I am going to have a nice sleep. Then he said something else that I couldn't hear, and he slid away. The moment that I will never forget is that in a fraction of a second, you see a life slide away. And, yeah... And this glass where he drank out This is the glass he drank out of. Didn't the police take the glass away? No. And the bottle? Yes, they took that. After his death, we remained in his room and said goodbye, quietly. Afterwards, we had the obligation to call the doctor and tell him. He came right over and saw the bottle. He could do nothing but declare that it was an unnatural death. With my approval. And he heeft vervolgens uit hoofde van zijn. He did his duty and reported it to the police, who came almost directly with the team to investigate the unnatural death. Vrijwel direct kwamen met een recherche team om de onnatuurlijke dood te onderzoeken. Het voordat de artsen was, hè? Hoe lang zat het tussen? How long was it between the time your father died and the doctor came? Waar schuur van de arts? Daar heb ik een half uur voor genomen. It took a half hour for that. During that half hour, what was it like upstairs? Almost surrealistic. We sat there more or less numb and thought, this is it then. The police investigate the bedroom and the rest of the house. They listen to Albert Terpstra and his friend. Their findings go directly to the public prosecution office. And at the end of the middag, 
uh, was dit voor de officier. At the end of the afternoon, the investigating officer said, okay then, we will release the body and you can make arrangements for cremation. Go ahead. Gaan werken. Ook mijn, nou, uh, kinderen hebben dus My children also lost their grandfather in the way that he wanted to present it to them. How did you explain it to them? What did you tell them? I had to say that grandpa really felt that he had to do this and gave it a lot of thought before making his decision. Opa net voortijdig heeft besloten van... Zo is het goed. En aan de oudste heb ik I told the oldest that if life was an alphabet, then grandpa did not want to live through to the Z.